This is Paul Newman. And if you are seeing this screen, I am hoping to assure you here that the live stream will start very soon. So please. Hello, everybody. And welcome back to what is a, another video. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Thank you very much for watching the videos. It's all very much appreciated. This video is going to be another National Hunt review, taking a look at the, the second part of three parts I'm going to do of February. This is probably the week after the Dublin Festival around between, say, the 10th and the 20th of February. What I'm going to take a look at, we've got four races to take a look at from that fortnight. As far as I'm aware, they are the only four races that we had uh, where horses identified on the channel were actually taking part in. And it's safe to say that uh, things went rather well. White flag is raised. That off over two miles in the feature mirrors chase. They listed BBA Ireland Limited Opera Hat. On they come to the first fence. It's Mascada and Onsti together, followed by the grey mare Riviere de Tell, who's tracked by Allegory de Vassi. Those two in a rematch of a fairy house mare's race. And to the far side, a silent approach. Fence number two, it's Mascada up and over. Allegory de Vassi, slight mistake at the rear. As it's Mascada on rising ground, leading on Steve Revere to tell silent approach, relegates Allegory de Vassi to be last of the five. Good run to fence number three. It's Mascada. Leading by length, two in second place, Honsty, third is Riviere de Tell, two and a half lengths to the final couple, silent approach and Allegory de Vassi as they make the bend, taking them to fences three and four along the side of the track. In the lead is Mascada and Darrow Keefe, and privy on the inside is Riviere de Tell and Jack Kennedy. Wide of the pair is Honsty, Danny Mullins, and then silent approach, Sean Flanagan, fifth of the five, Allegory de Vassi and Paul Townen. Shaping up for fence three, Mascada, joined by Riviere de Tell as they stretch the lead. Three legs of Ronsti who landed in third and fourth. The silent approach and the back marker as they head for the fourth fence is Allegory de Vassi. It's Mascada just shading it up front from Riviere de Tell. Gap of three to Ronsti in third and then silent approach and Allegory de Vassi. Over the fourth, good jump by the leader. Mascada and extended her advantage two and a half lengths of Riviere de Tell. In third is Onsti and four the silent approach. The back marker is Allegory de Vassi. A little more spaced out, heading for their first ditch. It's Mascada leading by a couple of lengths to Riviere de Tell. Third is Onsti and then silent approach and Allegory de Vassi as they jump that ditch, marking the halfway stage in the BBA Ireland Limited Opera Hat Mare's Listed Chase. In the lead is Mascada by a length and a half to Riviere de Tell. Taking closer order in third place is Onsti. Break of three to Silent Approach and Allegory de Vassi. They have another five fences left to jump as they head for the first of three, taking them for home the final time. It's Mascada from Riviere de Tell. Third is Onsti. A silent Approach sacrifices the fourth to Allegory de Vassi. Four fences left to jump as they head for the final ditch. It's Mascada from Riviere de Tell, who's back within half a length. Less than three lengths to Wonsti and then Allegory de Vassi, edging a little bit closer. And silent approach, knocked back to be last of the five as they head for three fences from the finish. Half a mile to go, matching strides, Riviere de Tell, the grey mare on the inside of Mascada. They're into it as one. Slight mistake. At the back of it by Mascada, Onsti, right on their heels along with her stable companion Allegory de Vassi and labouring a silent approach, drops a good few lengths off them at the back of the field. Returning to the point at which they started, two fences left to jump and it's Riviere de Terre on the inside. Turning in marginally in front of Mascada, 
And then Onsti and Allegori de Vassi, they've left behind silent approach. Coming to two out, Riviere de Tell with switching sides, Mascada, Allegori de Vassi within a couple of lengths of the pairs, they jump to second last, Riviere de Tell. Mascada loses second to Allegori de Vassi, who's hot on the heels of Riviere de Tell as they head for the final fence. And the BBA Ireland Limited Opera Hatmere's chase, and it is Riviere de Tell with coming there in the spots, Allegori de Vassi, and just jumps to the front on the the run uphill to the final 200 yards and it's Allegori de Vassi who's been confidently ridden here by Paul Town and have gone on by two lengths to Riviere de Tell, world clear of Mascada and Onsti and it's Allegori de Vassi restoring her form in the BBA Ireland limited opera hat mare's chase, turning the tables with Riviere de Tell, Mascada third. Started just asking him to steady down a little bit but he's happy and away we head. Three runners for one of our feature races of the day, the listed Trust a trader, fully vetted tradespeople, novices hurdle. And fun, fun, fun leads insurrection and favour and fortune towards the first of what is now seven flights of hurdles with just three in the back straight this afternoon and now a long run between flights one and two. Out in the lead is fun, fun, fun in the double green. Daryl Jacob for Willie Mullins in the colours of Simon Muneer and Isaac Swade. In second, the Noel Feely partnerships insurrection. Harry Cobden for Paul Nichols, red with the white chevron. Another very well-known set of colours in third, those of Hemmings Racing, Favour and Fortune. Quartered colours of yellow and green with the white sleeves for Tom Cannon and Alan King. So they turn away and what will be the case, I'm sure, all afternoon here, a steady gallop being set. Fun, fun, fun from Insurrection and Favour and Fortune as they move down the side of the race course. Fun, fun, fun. Lee Mullins with a First runner at the track leading Paul Nichols' insurrection and Alan King's favour and fortune down the side of the race course. All appear to have settled reasonably well and it's just an even pace. It's not a crawl being set by Fun Fun Fun. Daryl Jacob made his intentions plain that he was happy to make the running and he leads by two lengths. Fun 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 over insurrection and a couple of lengths back in third to favour and fortune as Fun, fun, fun. He's just being allowed to stride on as they move towards the right-hand turn. Fun, fun, fun by three lengths. Insurrection in second. And Favour and Fortune content at this stage to be within about five lengths of the leader who's reached the high point of the course and will now begin the descent towards three flights of hurdles in the back straight. Fun, fun, fun. Staying closer to the Inside, Harry Cobden just a little wider out on Insurrection, being tracked by Favour and Fortune. Just providing a little bit of cover to Favour and Fortune is Insurrection. As they now begin to climb back uphill again. And Fun, Fun, Fun rises three lengths clear from Insurrection with a similar break to Favour and Fortune. Fun, 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 shortish run towards the third. Jumps it well. Insurrection gave it plenty of daylight. Favour and Fortune, by contrast, was the lowest of the three. Just gave it a little nudge. It's fun, fun, fun. With Insurrection just a little bit closer. Favour and Fortune still three lengths off the front pair. This is four from the finish, and fun, 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 still by two lengths. Measures it well. Faster away from it than Insurrection, and the gap grows again to three, maybe even four lengths. Favour and Fortune a length away. So now we have the climb. And bypassing what would usually be the last in the back straight. Not in situ at all this afternoon due to the nature of the ground. And fun, fun, fun. It is he'll lead the turn then out of the back straight. Has the advantage. Insurrection in second place, just over a length away. And favour and fortune in third. And still apparently travelling well enough for Tom Cannon. Maybe Harry Cobden on insurrection, the one that's working busiest in second place. But all of them still... Sitting relatively quietly, fun, fun, fun has led to this point. Insurrection in second. Looks as if he's shortly to be joined by Favour and Fortune, who's taking slightly closer order now, but he's still in third, but only half a length behind Insurrection now as they make the turn for home. Out in the lead. Fun, fun, fun. Insurrection bumped along. Favour and Fortune will challenge towards the inside as they make their way up the home straight. Triangle being led. Still by fun, fun, fun. Favour and Fortune. Way to the left-hand side, Insurrection still just being bumped along, is now back in third place. First up the home straight, and over in the lead is Fun, Fun, Fun. 
Still pretty tightly grouped, however, with Insurrection and Favour and Fortune still a couple of lengths away. Fun, fun, fun is over two out. Favour and Fortune's moved into second place, but still has two lengths to find on Fun, Fun, Fun. Out in the lead, Fun, Fun, Fun from Favour and Fortune in second place, trying to get on terms. Switch now to try and deliver a challenge, but will still be over a length down at the last. Fun, Fun, Fun from Favour and Fortune. Insurrection is beaten off. Fun, 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 Favour and Fortune switches. Now tries to close. Fun, 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 still in front. Favour and Fortune has got to within half a length, but still fun, 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 holds him off. And fun, 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 an extra winner for Willie Mullins in the hands of Daryl Jacob for Simon Minear and Isaac Sway. Double green beat the green and yellow quarters as Favour and Fortune were second, and they pulled clear of insurrection. Away they go, over two miles, five furlongs, and the apples, Jade Mears, and Ovis Hurdle. Listed race, and it is Buddy O'Brien leading to the first Melbourne row, followed by Brighter Days Ahead. Check Jagged on the inside of Anna Lecker. In between horses is Ashdale Flyer, dropped in the Grey Pastorale. Continuing towards the second flight, and it is Buddy O'Brien, dual course winner, putting herself out for some black type. Alongside is Melbourne row, a length in front. And for a stable companion, brighter days ahead, and then Anna Lecker, Ashdale Flower, two lengths to Pastor Raleigh. Heading to the end of the back straight, their next flight will be number three. In the lead is the nose banded Buddy O'Brien, under Owen Walsh, tracked closely by Mel Monroe, and Sam Ewing, good on the first winner. Sharing third, Anna Lecker, Danny Mullins, the inside of brighter days ahead, and Jack Kennedy. With the final couple, Ashdale, Flower, Jody McGarvey, and Pastor Riley, Dado O'Keefe, as they leave behind them flight number three. Order pretty much unchanged. It is Buddy O'Brien heading across on the approach to the straight, leading Mel Monroe, Brighter Days Ahead, Anna Lecca, Ashdale, Flower, and Pastor Riley. As the six mares turn into the straight to the next two flights, four and five, as they enter their final two miles in the Listed Apples, Jade Mares, Novus Hurdle. Straightening up for the first of the two, it is Buddy O'Brien, Mel Monroe in the black and white. On the outside is Brighter Days Ahead. Knocking that hurdle flat was Anna Lecker. In between horses is Ashdale Flower, and sixth of the six is Pastor Ali. Continuing their progress in between the two flights in the straight, Buddy O'Brien. Leads the field from Mel Monroe, Brighter Days Ahead, Anna Lecker, and then Ashdale Flyer, and still stationed at the back is Pastor Riley. Onto the flight in front of the stands in the last one next time. It's Buddy O'Brien, forging on by a couple of legs to Mel Monroe. Close up on the outside is Brighter Days Ahead, returning from a mid season mini break. Unbeaten in her four starts so far, then Anna Lecker, Ashdale Flard, and Pastor Raleigh as they pass the winning post with the circuit to go. Soon at the halfway stage, it is Buddy O'Brien by less than two lengths to Mel Monroe, then Brighter Days Ahead, being followed by Anna Lecker, Ashdale Flard, and Pastor Raleigh. Just over four lengths covering them as they go to the flight along the side of the track, taking them inside the halfway stage. Buddy O'Brien, yet to be headed, followed by Mel Monroe, brighter days ahead. And the Lecker continues on the running rail, and then Ashdale Flower and the back marker turning into the back straight as Pastor Raleigh. Buddy O'Brien by a length and a half to Mel Monroe, brighter days ahead, and then Anna Lecker and Ashdale Flower, who were just about separated in a bunch up finish last time. Pastor Raleigh still sixth of the six. At the end of a circuit, Anna Lecker, bad mistake there, almost came down, but has been knocked back to the tail of the field, preceded now by both Ashdale Flower and Pastor Raleigh as they jump the next in the back straight. In the lead is still Buddy O'Brien from Brighter Days Ahead and Mel Monroe, and then Ashdale Flower, Pastor Raleigh, and been given time to recover, Anna Lecker at the back of the field. On to the last, down the far side, this will be four flights from the finish. Buddy O'Brien and Owen Walsh, followed by Mel Monroe, Sam Ewing. To the outside is Brighter Days Ahead and Jack Kennedy. 
Now I've been asked to take closer road to Ashdale, Flower, Jody McGarvey on the inside of Pastor Raleigh and Darrow O'Keefe. And although Analek is the back mark, we're very much in touch as they depart the far side with three flights left to jump. It's Buddy O'Brien by length to Mel Monroe, joined for second by Brighter Days Ahead, and then Ashdale Flower, Pastor Raleigh and Anna Lecker, as they jump the flight, taking them for the home straight the last time. Buddy O'Brien from Brighter Days Ahead, edging into second place on the outside of Mel Monroe. Couple of lengths to Ashdale Flower, and then comes Pastor Raleigh and Anna Leck at the back marker by a couple of lengths with three and a half furlongs to go and two flights left. Buddy O'Brien swings in fractional leader from Mel Monroe, nudged along in between horses. On the outside is Brighter Days Ahead, who appears to be full of running, and then Ashdale Flower, Pastor Raleigh and Anna Leck are now being wound up at the back as they arrive at the second last. And Brighter Days Ahead comes there to pick it up from Mel Monroe, fading as the long time leader. Buddy O'Brien and then Pastor Raleigh leaving well behind the other pair and it is Brighter Days Ahead opening up with one flight left in the Apples Jade Mares Novice Hurdle. It is Brighter Days Ahead by a widening three lengths to Pastor Raleigh who moves off in pursuit and then Mel Monroe and Buddy O'Brien and with one flight left to jump it is Brighter Days Ahead by four. At the last Brighter Days Ahead up and over from Pastor Raleigh who made a mistake in third place is Mel Monroe but it is Brighter Days Ahead on a a continuous run of upticks makes it five from five in the Apples Jade Mare's Novice Hurdle. Brighter Days Ahead wins it, pulling a cart from Pastor Raleigh and Mel Monroe. They're off. Away first time for the Virgin Bets. Victor Ludorum Juvenile Hurdle. Scheduled to jump at nine flights of hurdles along the way. An odds-on favourite, Salva, jumps off in front. Got a little bit warm down at the start, sweating freely down the neck. He gives a lead to his chief market rival, Castle Four, on the near side. The Dame of the Cotswolds, Yellow Cap, hops over in third place, just ahead of the nose banded Cusco, and they make their way on towards the second. Uh, Salva setting what at the moment is a fairly modest early gallop, only around the mid 20s miles an hour, and Salva goes keenly, just leading Castle Four over the second to Dame of the Cotswolds and away to the left, Cusco. Short run to the last of the flights up the straight first time. Salva and Castle Four, the leading half of the field. Followed by Dame of the Cotswolds and Cusco, and they hunt in pairs at a still moderate sort of a pace. Even, but moderate. 25, 26 miles an hour. So they prepare to embark upon a complete circuit, a longish run to the first of the hurdles over on the far side. Salva. The hands of Kaelin Quinn for trainer Gary Moore. We'll be teaming up with fullback in the big race a little later. Silver seeking to make it four in succession in his short hurdling career so far, leading the hat trick seeking Castle Four, who's himself created a good impression in the early part of his career. Dame of the Cotswolds stalking the duo immediately ahead of her and Cusco. On his British debut, held up last of four as they descend with a run of about 200 metres or so before they leave the ground at the fourth. Pace on the downhill stretch, a little more generous. They nudged 29 miles an hour or so. Salva over Castle Four. Dame of the Cotswolds, the yellow cap, and then the nose banded Cusco approaching the halfway point of the Virgin Bet. Victor Ladorum juvenile hurdle. Salva on the near side of Castle Four. And Salva much the quick hour of the leading pair there. Gained him ground over Castle Four, who comes back within a half length, approaching the last of the hurdles down the back. Four out. Salva, Castle Four, virtually alongside. Tame of the Cotswolds and Kuzco waiting in the wings. And on that occasion, that Salva just clipped the top. Castle Four pressures him as they move into the far corner. Lengthy gallop now to the third last. Salva and Castle Four. Cusco in the noseband now just shading third around the outer of Dame of the Cotswolds. Nudging 30 miles an hour as they head to the turn. And Castle Four is having to be bustled along to match strides with Salva. And the odds-on favourite at this stage at least seems to be travelling powerfully in front. Turning in then to face the third last, Salva. 
A ridden along Castle 4, Kappa lengths down. Cusco still waiting to pounce in third. Hasn't been asked a serious question yet, but he's got four lengths to make up on Salva. Damon the Cotswolds perhaps just becoming a little outpaced. And here's the third last, Salva. Hops over a couple of lengths in advance of Castle 4. Cusco now shaken up, asked to get a bit closer. Green Jacket moving up onto the tail of Salva. They're still a long way out. More than a quarter of a mile to travel. Two to jump. Salva. Wasn't a stride there for him, was there? He had to reach for that pitch. Castle 4 on the left, rallying pluckily under pressure. Cusco angled out. Here's the last. Long run in. Salva. Bunny hopped it. Landed awkwardly. Bad mistake. Dame of the Cotswolds back in fourth. Halfway up the run in. Salva. Now just asked for a little bit more. Asked to assert. Asked to go and win his race. Castle 4 is chasing gamely. Cusco has been seen off. Dame of the Cotswolds moving into third. Salva has too much class for them, however. He'll extend his winning sequence and the Cheltenham Festival surely beckons next. Salva takes gold, hard held over Castle for Dame of the Cotswolds and Cusco. Yes, uh, four very interesting races there. Allegory de Vassi. And I feel that could be proved to be arguably the best performance I've seen from the from the mayor since I started to follow her. She won that listed race to a mark of 159 and I thought rather like a listed win at Clonmel earlier in the season she just uh, she just tried round in her own time really she still had to give two pounds to Riviere de Tell and I think on this occasion she did that comfortably and she won very easily indeed very encouraging performance with the Chapman Festival just around the corner, and people will see that for the Paddy Power Mayor's Chase, Allegri de Vassi is 7-2 to two at the moment, and it'll be interesting to see how she runs. Fun, fun, fun. Well, I was delighted to see this mayor win at listed level. They had to send her to the UK to do it. She was arguably very unlucky not to win at listed level in December, when a terrible mistake at the last Cost her any chance of victory. Uh, to be honest, I'd have been disappointed if, it, if she proved not good enough to defeat only the two UK mares that she took on on the day. But I think she set a good, honest pace. And I, at no stage did I think they were going to catch her. You'll see there that she only ran to a racing post rating of 125 to run these ways, which according to these is the same figure she won, ran to when she won her maiden hurdle at Thurless. She's still only three pounds higher than her National Hunt flat mark after three hurdle marks. The National Hunt flat four was good enough to win a grade two. And to me, I feel as though she has got a bit of improvement left in her. Brilliantly bred mare. People will see that at those terms, getting weight off the uh, UK horses, she had to stand an excellent chance, really. But they're both rated higher than her on the day. And it was a good piece of placing by Willie Mullins, really. And she took advantage. Interesting that the Trev Emmings horse was actually rated 135, 10 higher than Fun Fun Fun. Gave her a good race. But I thought at those terms, it would have been very disappointing if Fun 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 proved not good enough. Brighter days ahead. Well, she just seems to go from strength to strength. Another listed victory for her. Another career best over hurdles for her. This time winning by 12 lengths and running to a mark of 142. You'll see there, slow and steady improvement over hurdles. 122, 138, 142. And it was good to see a follow-up. Her Group 3 victory in November with another listed victory there. It was a very good win indeed, I thought. And all uh, stepped up in trip for the first time as well to two miles and five furlongs. And I think both these two will figure in the same race if they run to run at Cheltenham. Bright Days Ed is actually in the Supreme Novices Hurdle, which is a 25 to 1 shot. She's also in the, the, the Mayor's Hurdle, a 33 to 1 shot. She's also in the Bearing Bingham, which is a 14 to 1 shot. And the bookmakers seem to think she's likely to take her chance in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, the Grade 2, which to me would be the obvious choice. 
which she is a five to two chance. Fun, fun, fun for the same race. The grade two is available at 14 to one. Beautifully bred mare. And I'm looking forward to seeing if she takes her chance. It wasn't just the mares, as you saw in that. Salva doing his bit for the juvenile hurdle, which for a grade two winner last time out at Chepstow in December, it would have been disappointing if he couldn't win a class two hurdle at Haydock. And so it proved a three and a half length victory over Castle Fort. At no point did the horse come off the bridle. I thought he had a lovely, lovely trot round there, it's fair to say. They had no alternative, really, but to rate the race lower than a grade two. He ran to a mark, according to the racing post, of 118. You know, it took a seven lower than it took him to win his grade two at Chepstow. The trainer is being a bit vague about the, the horses going to Cheltenham. We'll see that the horses entered in the Triumph Hurdle which he can be backed at 16 to 1 at the current time for that on the Friday. I mean, if he was to take his place, I would definitely be watching him go round. That's for certain. Right, I'm going to end this video here now. Four runs, four wins. We're walking people one on a Sunday morning. Four superb horses continuing their route towards the major targets in both the UK and Ireland. I'll mention quickly repcic racing 2020great slash site not net. Plenty of older horses going round, stallions, mares, all sorts of things. It sort of stopped at 2020. The website became full around November 2020. But there is plenty of horses on there. People would like to check that out. And what I will also do at the end of the video is I will give everybody a steer. I will give everybody a list to all the National Hunt Racing playlist at the moment so they can see how the horses have been doing since we've started tracking them and i will also give people an opportunity to subscribe to the channel if they do wish those who have chosen to watch this video which is perfectly fine by me without subscribing right i'm going to leave this video here now take care everybody enjoy the rest of your sunday and take care goodbye